In this summary of the Lex Fridman's podcast with Mohammed El Kurd, a Palestinian poet, journalist, and influential voice for the Palestinian cause, a deep discussion is held around the Israeli Palestinian conflict. The focus lies specifically on the struggles faced by Palestinians in Sheikh Jarrah, a neighborhood in East Jerusalem where El Kurd grew up. El Kurd provides a poignant narrative about the injustices his community faced at the hands of the Israeli settlers and authorities. He narrates that his family, along with others in Sheikh Jarrah, were forcefully evicted from their homes, which were claimed by Israeli settlers based on dubious legal documents. He argues against these actions, stating they're in violation of international law and basic human rights. El Kurd also scrutinizes the Israeli judicial process that favors Israeli settlers, citing fabricated documents and the refusal to consider documents validating the Palestinians' claims. El Kurd then shares his family's fight against a series of eviction orders through legal appeals, recounting the violence their neighborhood experienced in 2009. Despite their pleas, they were expelled from their homes, with settlers occupying their spaces shortly after. In 2020, El Kurd and his community launched a campaign to bring global attention to their situation, aiming to debunk the framing of their predicament as only a real estate dispute. Their efforts bore some fruit when multiple eviction orders were canceled by the Israeli Supreme Court, marking a small yet symbolic victory for the Palestinians of Sheikh Jarrah. El Kurd also provides context for the broader Israeli-Palestinian conflict, explaining how Palestinians' homes, towns, and cities exist within the infrastructure of Israel, making Palestinians mere residents of their own lands. He notes this important context often gets lost in media representation, leading to misconceptions about the actual scenario. The dialogue underscores the manipulation of legal frameworks to legitimize oppressive actions such as demolitions of Palestinian homes and their forced displacement. Drawing parallels with past instances of systemic discrimination like Jim Crow laws, El Kurd argues that legality does not guarantee morality. His narrative serves as a stark reminder of the struggles within and broader implications of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Mohammed El Kurd then discusses the ongoing conflict between Palestine and Israel. He suggests that evidence of the racist policies and acts of Israel are clearly visible on the ground and don't require confessions or slip-ups to be proven. El Kurd goes back to 1948 and brings up Nakba, a term that translates to catastrophe in Arabic. He explains how the event marked the creation of the Israeli state following numerous atrocities committed by Zionist paramilitaries. According to El Kurd, over 500 villages were demolished and more than 15,000 people were killed. A majority of Palestinian population had to flee their homes, culminating in nearly complete obliteration of Palestinian society a situation which, he argues, continues to this day. El Kurd also mentions the Balfour Declaration, a commitment made by the British in 1917 to facilitate the establishment of a Jewish state in Palestine. He suggests that despite this historical context, no state or individual has the right to displace people from their homes as is happening in Palestine. Discussing the human side of the situation, El Kurd talks about the anger and hate he feels. However, he views these feelings as a fuel for action rather than something that clouds his judgment, allowing him to be honest about what's happening on the ground. He insists the real conflict lies in the bulldozing of homes and the treatment of Palestinians by Israeli soldiers not underlying personal sentiments. When asked whether the conflict is religious, El Kurd emphatically denies it. He believes it's not a religious issue, but a land issue, disputing the notion that the conflict is ancient and complicated. El Kurd goes on to denounce the idea proposed by former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. He asserts that it's possible to oppose Zionistic political agendas without being anti-Semitic, El Kurd openly criticizes the use of accusations of anti-Semitism to stifle political opposition and advocacy for Palestinian liberation. He states that he himself has been labeled an anti-Semite by the Anti-Defamation League, ADL, but refuses to let such labels deter his activism. El Kurd criticizes the ADL, which he claims has historically engaged in surveillance on black liberation movements, anti-apartheid South African activists, and more. He believes the ADL should be about reducing hate, yet suggests it is doing the opposite by advising police departments to spy on certain groups, such as black organizers. When asked about anti-Semitism and anti-Jewish sentiment in the world, and specifically in the United States, 
Elkerd takes a strong stance against it, saying, It's completely unfortunate and wrong. He condemns any form of hatred and emphasizes the importance of equality and fair treatment for everyone. Elkerd speaks passionately about the situation of Palestinians, shedding light on the horrors he believes they face under Israeli occupation. He questions the accepted definitions of terrorism and freedom, asserting that Palestinians are viewed negatively for defending their homes and expressing their frustrations. His significant quote is, If somebody's attacking your home, you'll fight back. If somebody is attacking your family, you fight back. He discusses the contentious issue of violence as an effective method of protest and resistance. Elkerd believes that Palestinians have been forced to use violence due to their challenging circumstances, but also emphasizes the importance of shifting public opinion, diplomacy, and politics. Elkerd critiques the Israeli government for what he deems as division and fragmentation of the Palestinian people. He provides examples of different treatments of Palestinian groups based on legal status and location, that is, West Bank, Gaza Strip, underscoring the hardships faced by each group. He points out the dire conditions in the Gaza Strip, referring to it as an open-air prison where people lack clean water, food, health care, and freedom of movement. Elkerd highlights the Palestinian struggle and their enduring national identity, despite the challenges. He firmly believes in the Palestinians' right to fight back, consistently advocating for their right to return to their homes, fair justice, and a peaceful coexistence. In this section of the podcast, they engage in an in-depth discussion about the political and humanitarian situation in Palestine, specifically referring to an Israeli military incursion in Janin, as described in a Washington Post article. Muhammad provides a critical perspective on media reporting of the situation, admonishing the lack of context concerning the illegal occupation that Palestinians face. He emphasizes that cities like Janin are under illegal occupation, and the Israeli military has no business being there. He asserts that it is this backdrop that prompts Palestinians to arm themselves for self-defense. The speaker censures the violence with which Israelis operate, asserting that such traumatizing measures merely result in more resistance among Palestinians. Muhammad further states that the violence employed by Palestinians is not out of machismo or heroism, but out of a struggle for survival. In his words, it's not even about courage, it's about survival. They don't do this because of machismo or because of heroic tendencies. It's because this is about survival. Drawing an analogy with the Ukrainian resistance celebrated by mainstream media, Muhammad expresses frustration at the double standards in the global narrative on violence and resistance. He explains how Palestinians suffer from anti-Palestinian racism, which often portrays them as barbaric terrorists, thus failing to understand and empathize with their plight. Throughout the discussion, Muhammad emphasizes that Palestinians are not inherently violent. However, imposed living conditions, discrimination, and systematic attempts to suppress their resistance have led to their retaliation. He outlines his vision of a world without borders, militaries, prisons, walls, and racist laws, and asserts that violence and the desperate struggle for power isn't the only way forward. In terms of solutions to the Palestine-Israel conflict, Muhammad views a two-state solution as impossible due to geographic and fairness concerns. Instead, he insists, the refugees need to return, land needs to be reclaimed, wealth needs to be redistributed, and the Nakba catastrophe needs recognition. El Khord vehemently disagrees with the notion of Israel's existential threat, arguing that it diverts attention from the real insecurity felt by the Palestinians. He explains, the Israeli government continues to talk about an existential threat about Iran being an existential threat, even though the Israeli government is the only body that holds nuclear weapons in the region. Contrarily, he delineates the hardships and threats faced by Palestinian journalists and citizens under the occupation, such as limited institutional backing, cybersecurity, and healthcare. He further criticizes Israelis' alleged obsession with genocide, stating, I think Israelis are obsessed with genocide because they have enacted genocide against us. He doesn't believe there's an existential threat to Israel as long as power balances remain as they are, but he does question the legitimacy of the continuation of the Israeli regime due to their alleged crimes against Palestinians. He emphasizes his longing for the end of what he terms as the ethnic cleansing campaign against his community for over seven decades. Elkerd voices his disapproval of the current Israeli legal system and calls for an end to injustices perpetuated by what he perceives as a lack of diversity within the Israeli political spectrum. 
Despite the allegations of imposed hardships, he still hopes for a peaceful coexistence based on historical periods of harmony in Jerusalem. He criticizes what he deems as a manufactured religious conflict imposed by settlers who transform Palestine into an area of religious turmoil. El Kurd delves into property rights issues given the Israeli court's refusal to authenticate land ownership documents prior to the establishment of the Israeli state, an act he believes will lead to a significant loss of Palestinian property in Jerusalem. Nevertheless, despite the odds seemingly stacked against them, families are still fighting for their rights collectively in Israeli courts and appealing to the international community for attention and support. El Kurd emphasizes that this fight is more than just about property ownership. It is about acknowledging injustice and civil rights and working towards a future where coexistence isn't merely an unattainable concept, but a realistic possibility. El Kurd speaks about the struggle for Palestinians to have their narratives heard in media outlets and how the international community was moved into action due to the immense media pressure created by the people who marched, spread facts, wrote articles, and made videos online, even at the risk of getting arrested or brutalized. He attributes the United States' response to the situation in Palestine, not to their initiative, but as a consequence of the immense popular pressure placed on the country. He also critiqued the negative role the United States plays in the conflict, highlighting the vast financial aid given to Israel annually, calling into question the interest of the American taxpayers in the ongoing conflict. El Kurd emphasized that while the general American public opinion is gradually changing about Palestine, the recognition of the issue in Washington remains slow-paced. Addressing the writings of Ghassan Kanafani, who he considers a major inspiration, El Kurd explored the three threats to the Palestinian nationalist movement outlined by Kanafani, local reactionary leadership, the regimes in neighboring Arab states, and the imperialist Zionist enemy. He analyzed how these threats are represented today, highlighting the normalization of relations with Israel by Arab countries, not as a cause for celebration, but as deals based on mutual strategic interests rather than genuine religious reconciliation. El Kurd expressed his concern about the negative impact of such agreements on the region, explaining how they're often marketed with flowery language, but ultimately perpetuate the occupation of Palestine. El Kurd also discussed his resistance to political office, instead choosing to utilize the power of words in English to bridge the gap between narratives about Palestinians in Arabic and English. He explained his focus on literature, culture, and public opinion, asserting his belief that shaping narratives could lead to policy changes and material benefits for Palestinians. El Kurd affirmed his hope to influence critical thinking about Palestine among the diaspora and the wider international community. The conversation also touched on his book and his views on the power and limitations of poetry as a medium to express large ideas in a simplistic way. His mother is also a poet, and he mentioned how their morning game of guessing lines that would be redacted by the Israeli military censor was a big part of his upbringing. Despite this, he acknowledged that even this space to express oneself without repercussions is limited, referencing instances of Palestinian writers experiencing repercussions due to their work. El Kurd spoke about his lack of preference for any U.S. presidential candidate for the 2024 election, although he did praise Cornell West's recent berating of Anderson Cooper on CNN. El Kurd then begins talking about his memoir, tentatively titled A Million States in One. The book explores the complexities and realities of growing up in his neighborhood, particularly focusing on the deportations in 2009, 2020, and 2021. He explores the diplomatic, media, and grassroots campaigns that have taken place to save their homes. El Kurd also talks about other communities that are threatened with expulsion and how through his book, he aims to uphold their dignity. He wants to reject the idea that whilst being victimized, they should also be polite in their suffering. Instead, he wants to acknowledge the humor and absurdities he and his people have experienced, despite the hardship. The conversation then shifts to the specific words El Kurd uses to convey his experiences, both in English and Arabic. While he sees himself as a perfectionist, he also notes how his writing is often disrupted by news of violence marking the realities of his people's lives. This leads to a discussion about journalism's role and its shortcomings in reporting about Palestine with El Kurd criticizing its failure to communicate the complexities of the situation. 
El Kurd also acknowledges the high rates of depression among Palestinians and attributes it to the challenging conditions they live under. He views his work of bringing attention to these issues as an obligation, not a choice. Despite the difficulties, El Kurd draws hope from history, knowing that no injustice lasts forever. What El Kurd admires most about Palestinians is their resilience in the face of adversity. He values how they continue to resist, write, and live in spite of the oppression they face. The phenomena of martyrdom culture and prison culture are discussed in this context, Elkert explaining how such aspects demonstrate the resilient spirit of Palestinians. They refuse to let structures meant to break their spirits succeed and instead celebrate life and nurture their love for freedom. This is what he loves most about Palestine. El Kurd, a Palestinian writer and poet, known for his eloquent expressions, evokes a sense of determination and resolution in his words. His distinction between stubbornness and resilience suggests a unique perspective and deviation from the norm, a form of rebellion in itself. The spirit of rebellion is further corroborated by Lex Fridman's closing remark, where he commends El Kurd for being a man exemplifying an unbreakable spirit. The word unbreakable here indicates a level of resilience that is more than mere resistance. It is characterized by constancy and fearlessness that can withstand any adversity. Fridman shows his gratitude towards El Kurd for the valuable perspectives he has shared during their conversation, thus emphasizing the informative and enlightening nature of their discussion. He then concludes in an optimistic note directed towards his podcast audience encouraging them to support the continuation of such thoughtful dialogues through sponsorship. He ties this off by quoting the profound words of Nelson Mandela. It always seems impossible until it's done, reinforcing the overarching theme of resilience and determination discussed during the podcast. Check out the full podcast by clicking the link in the description below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for listening to this podcast summary episode of The Pod Slice.